It all comes down to this game. The playoff final. Bosnia versus Portugal. Who qualifies for the World Cup? Setting my lineup, I put in Vizca over Stevanovic. Goyak over Lonchar. Kolasinac over Cevic. We start the game. And immediately, I demand more. Demand more! It was a corner kick for us. Timrod takes the corner. And Edin Dzeko bangs it in the header. Let's go! 1-0 over Portugal. In the 10th minute, Portugal get a chance. But Asmir Begovic with his athleticism saves the chance. Portugal get the corner. And it's sent it to Ronaldo! But Begovic makes a save. Nicely done, Bego. 89th minute, we're still up. 1-0. Kolasinas for the throw into Timirot. And now we're time wasting. Kolasinas tries to get it to Krunic. But it's intercepted. Portugal cross it. And it's a goal! 1-1. Tie game. But wait. The referee is reviewing it. And it's disallowed. It was an offside goal. And Bosnia barely hold on to beat Portugal 1-0. And we qualify for the World Cup in Qatar. Let's go. Looking at the stats, Portugal dominated the attack. We just controlled possession. Begwich with an impressive performance with nine saves. And people wanted him off the team. Get out of here. The FA still love me. The newspapers are still talking shit. But we qualified. I did my due diligence scouting people because we have the Nations League coming up. Jacob, Begovic, Pjanic, Vizca are all getting old. We need to find replacements. We jump ahead for the Nations League draw. We get Finland again. We get our neighbors, Serbia. And we get Ukraine again. Why do we always get the same team? Here's a look at the other groups in our league. Safe to say, we got an easy one, right? Kolasin has picked up another suspension, so he's out for the first Nations League game. Time to bring back Cevic. Looking at our schedule ahead, we have Serbia first. This is a big game for us. Rival nations, apparently. Then we have five more games after that. And we're going to go through all of them in this episode. Jacob picks up an injury. He comes back the day of the Serbian game. But I'm going to keep him out just to not risk anything. 20 days left. I'm awarded a FA Coach of the Year. Bala Svima. Jumping into the Serbian match. I start Demirovic over Jacob and Sanicanin over Ahmed Hojic. And we're off. I'm at Goyak. Steals the ball, runs wide to find Demirovic, ready for the ball, deep in the attacking territory. He's alone, so he shoots, but it gets saved. Serbia get a corner next possession, and they're not set properly, and Vizca is away. He runs, he's going alone all this time, all this space. He looks for Demirovic in the middle, and imagine Demirovic scores his first goal for Bosnia and Herzegovina to take the lead over Serbia. Let's Go! But Serbia, they attack too. Their wing player, Kostic, puts in the middle and finds Vlahovic, the young striker, and he ties the game up. 1 1. Cevic with the missed coverage. Serbia continue to attack. Our defense is just allowing it. They score a goal, but the referee disallows it for the offsides. I gotta say, the referees are saving me this episode. Because in the second half, Serbia scores again. But it's also denied because of an offside position. Shout out to the referees. Now Bosnia get a chance. Vizca with the ball. Gives it to Gazi Begovic. With terrific passing. Look at this. Goyak finds Lulic. Lulic gives it to Demirovic. Lulic gets the ball back. After a little pick and roll. And bang. Send out Lulic. Scores the goal. 2-1. Over Serbia. And that's how the game ends. The game ends 2-1. Cevic had an abysmal game. We had no attacking game at all. All we did was possess. But hey, it's working. As long as we're not losing, right? We are first in our group, but we jump straight against Ukraine. Krunic finds Lulic Lulane, who sets up Amer Goyak, who scores an amazing goal. 1-0, Amer Goyak. This is going to be goal of the year for us. Next big play, Stevanovic plays it through Jekyll, and he scores as well. 2-0. Ukraine are slacking, and we're doing well. 86 minute now. Lulic plays a bad pass, and their counterattack is on. That one dude just ran from their goal box all the way to our goal box and scores a goal. 2-1. It's okay. We can still win this. Or not. Ukraine get a set piece here, and they wide open. Yadovchen scores a goal. I don't know how Bagers didn't say that, but it is what it is. 2-2 two -two is the final, but we were the better team. Like I said, this game is hard to play. 
We are still first with four points. Serbia and Finland both have one point. We play Finland next, 85 days away. Oh boy, do I hope we stay in form. I continue to research more players because I feel Finland are the weaker side of the group. I'm thinking to experiment a little in this game. I might give this 24 year old a chance. I thought he was a wing back, but I guess he's a midfielder who can also play wing back. Next thing you know, it's time for the World Cup draw. And slowly, the group starts selected. And look, we are in Group D. Then we get Poland. Add USA to that. And to top it all off, we get Brazil. You can definitely argue we have a tough group. Group of death potentially, not including Group B. But here are the final groups. It's gonna be a fun World Cup. I decided to schedule a friendly against Costa Rica. Two of the nations we play are from the Americas. We skip ahead to the Finland game. People say Chivas should be dropped. And I agree. I change up my lineup for this match just to experiment with new players and tactics. We get into the game and Finland score already. Yo! We continue the game and Finland are just a great team, yo. Puki goes through, but luckily Begwish saves the goal here. Finland may have taken over my hate because I don't hate the Greeks no more. I hate Finland. Something happens in the 60th minute. We get a penalty. I guess someone was pulling on Jacob. I don't know what happened. Jacob steps up to take it and he's pretty automatic and bangs it top right, top left if you're the keeper. The game ends a draw. 1-1. One, one. I go back to the old lineup against Ukraine. Come on, we need a win. Look at this pass here from my team. Makes me proud, but there's a lot of hesitation. I gotta figure out how to make these players attack. Anyways, Kunic goes through, gets tackled from behind, and that's a red card, and Ukraine are down to 10 men. It's the 63rd minute, and we haven't scored yet. I went into an all-attacking mentality, even changed some tactics to make them attack to score a goal. We get one chance at the very end, a corner kick, which sails everyone. Jacob finds Simirot, who sets up Goyak with a shot, hits the crossbar, and Vistra can't finish, and that's the game. 0-0 with Ukraine down to 10 men. Serbia have taken first place from us with 7 points. Bosnia struggle to find form and it's true we can't win a game. At least we've gone 7 games without losing which is a record for us but still Bichachkic is injured for 3 months so he most likely is out for the World Cup. Great time to rely on our inexperienced wing backs. Seeing as the World Cup is coming up I decided to hire Seat Salic as a coach. I made him go scout for the players for the team because this might be Jaco's last World Cup run and we need a good striker. Our next game is against Serbia and their coach Stojkovic says this isn't a grudge match and thinks I was having fun in our first match. I was. I was talking a load of crap. But I said I don't hate this guy and we move on. The big rival game against Serbia. Win out and we get proponent. Let's do this boy. We beat them once. We can do it again. And it ends in a 0-0 draw with no highlights. So anticlimactic. Our last game is against Finland. We need a win and a Serbian loss to get promoted. Just look at this play. How is this possible? Puki just scores again on us. Finland, you making me hate you for real. I yell at my team for playing so poorly. Berate them, berate them, play better. And I guess something worked because good buildup leads to Vistra finding Jaco and he equalizes for us 1-1. And that would be the end of the game. Serbia get promoted to League A, we stay in League B, and Ukraine get relegated to League C. It's time to work on my lineup before the World Cup starts. We have a friendly against Costa Rica, then Poland, Brazil, and USA. We haven't lost a game yet. Can we continue this streak and hopefully pick up a few wins where it matters the most? The World Cup episode is next. Can we get far? Stay tuned to find out. This has been your boy Fawn. Ciao.